Okay, welcome, Lisa. Hey. To, hey, welcome to um, Model Secrets, and we're super excited to have you and have a conversation and talk to you all about what you know about the business. business so I'm definitely here I'm excited it's good to see you too Katya good to see you too nice to meet you we're nice super excited to have you oh thank yeah. you oh I love yeah. this you know Kim and I can talk about modeling all day long I know <laughs> every <laughs> time I see models we started out as models so it's a yeah. different passion than other like agents or mother agents have yeah so and that's what I was I was just gonna ask you that so I know that you started out as a model so Tom can you tell us a little bit about you know how you started yeah, how I started yeah I was actually discovered by Karen Lee from elite you were uh, yeah when I was 16 years old I lived in, in the DC area and I went to I can't believe you were discovered from my like my dearest friend in the world yes, I have no yes. idea. she doesn't remember last time I saw her I was like do you remember that you found me in 16 oh she's like no, I don't remember that yeah I was 16 and then I moved um, to uh, Belgium and so I started working in Amsterdam and Brussels and working in Europe uh, and I graduated high school in Belgium. And then after that, I went to Miami, like in the heyday, 1998, yeah. 99, 2000. It was so fun. I <laughs> loved Miami. And then I started working in LA and New York from there. Yeah. So yeah, no, I was with Ford Models after that for many, many years. So how long were you with Elite? Elite, well, I mean, I signed with Elite when I was 16. And then I wasn't with them for long because my father was in the service in the Air Force and he got stationed in Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't work for long in the States. I, I flew to New York for YM. Remember YM? Yeah, of course. Yeah, for that cover goal model search thing. That was fun. And how'd you do? I did good. <laughs> oh, good. I did good, yeah. <laughs> I still have that magazine. I loved it. <laughs> so, um, all right. So when you started modeling, where are some of the places that you, I mean, you worked in New York. And where else did you work? Oh, I really loved working in Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, my favorite market. I was supposed to go for three months. I stayed for six months. I went back a couple years later. It's a huge market, especially for girls. Blonde, blondes, there's a lot of German and Swedish clients that work there, but a lot of mixed race, mulatto type girls work really well there, like me, um, with the big curly hair um, and darker skin. So it's a great market. Wow. I, I, I know. I never even knew that. Look. Oh, come on. Yeah. No, I, I, mean, I, sent, I sent tons of models there. Um, Jordan Rand is one of my models. She went there and she killed it. Did a bunch of magazines. Um, she's now working in London. She's a mixed race girl. Um, no, it's just, it's just a great market. I mean, the, you know, South Africa is not doing really well right now. So yeah. It's not the best place to go right now, obviously. Yeah. But, um, I don't think any place is good to go right now. <laughs> the only place good right now where girls are working is Germany. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So that's when, when you, I know. what, what? The only place I know right now that's working normal kind of market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Seoul. Oh, really? In Seoul? Yeah, Seoul. Mm -hmm. Seoul was one of the first during the pandemic to shut everything down. And so they haven't had any issues of late. It's a big booming market right now. A lot of girls are traveling there for work, which is good money market. For yeah. Did you ever go, Katya, as a model? No, I've only been modeling in the U.S. No. Oh, U.S. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But where are you originally from? Originally from Russia. Oh, Russia, okay. Yeah, Yeah, and I'm actually based in D.C. area as well. Like, where you oh, start. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I lived there for four years, so I like the D.C. area. I know, it's nice. So, um, tell me about what kind of clients you've worked with when you were a model. Oh, let's see here. I was more of a commercial catalog girl. Mm -hmm. So... It was the money jobs back then, right? So I was right. mo modeling mostly from 1998 to 2010. Um, and I did tons of TV commercials. That was my whole thing. And that was when TV commercials were booming. I would have like eight to 10 on every year on air. People would be like, oh, I see you on that commercial and recognize yeah. you in the studio. It was super fun. Um, yeah. So I used to love TV commercials. Um, and I did tons of catalogs like Saks and Neiman's and Nordstrom's, Macy's, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, just running the gamut. I wasn't a big editorial show girl, unfortunately. I'm only five feet eight. Oh, you are? Yeah. 
Five, eight and a half, yeah. You must wear heels because I had no idea. Well, it doesn't matter nowadays, but back I then. I know, no, it doesn't yeah, matter. Back now. then it was a big deal. I had to fight my way into agencies. Yeah. Luckily, I was skinny, super skinny naturally, so that helped out a lot. But yeah. back then, well, like when we used to model, it was all about the height and the sizes yeah. and how photogenic you were. And luckily, I was photogenic, you know, because I wanted to model so bad. But nowadays, my goodness, you can be any size, any, any size, size yeah. any color, any this. Yeah. yeah. It's so great. I know we talk about that all the time, how fantastic it is to be any size and any... I mean, yeah. it, like you had to be this and this. And this, and this. No, mm -mm. all the girls had to be a certain size. Back right. Then. Yeah. I mean, and absolutely. There many models, obviously, there weren't as many models. It wasn't as competitive. We all made great money. Yeah. The catalog dropped for five grand a day, seven grand a day. You know, really? like uh, catalog jobs don't even exist anymore. It's e-com and they cut your yes. head off and give you 800 <laughs> bucks for the day. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I know. I never forget going to San Diego and spending two weeks there. It was like with, I was with Ford and it was like one of the best jobs. It was like, mm -hmm. like 5,000 a day. And yeah, it was no, like, real money. you were two weeks. I mean, it was like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it was really good. It was really good. And those days are not like that anymore. Unless you're a taught working model and right. you're a taught working model, you get paid very well nowadays. Very well, yeah. You have to really work so hard to get to that level. And you yeah. can get there. Models, you can get there. It's just you have to say, you know what, this is going to take me two or three years and I've got to work my butt off, stay in great shape, listen to my yeah. agent, travel, do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and build work. a social media presence. Well, yep. There you go, Katya. Oh my goodness. <laughs> social media presence. Yes. She's the best at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, still learning. Get it. You get it. That's what I always say to girls. Like, you get it. A lot yeah. of girls, they don't get it, like how they have to be. Yeah. Some, some of them get Instagram, some of them get TikTok, some of them get yeah. YouTube. As long as you get some type of social media platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many followers do you have now, Katya, on TikTok? I have uh, 30,000 on Woo! TikTok. That's good. So I know that you, so you modeled and then you switched to being an agent. So mm -hmm. like, w when did you do that, first of all? Uh, 2010. Okay, so you stopped modeling in 2010 and then... Why did you change? What made you want to change on the other side? Well, first of all, I've always wanted to work in the modeling business, whether as a model or transition into a scout mm. um, or agent. I always wanted to. Um, I moved back to New York. I was pregnant with my, after, after having my second child, I have three boys. After my second child, I just wanted to get out of modeling. You know, I'd been doing it for so long. I loved it, but the, I saw things were changing. Um, with two little kids, I kind of wanted to be home with them. So I wanted to start my own business. And actually, you know, Patty Sicular from Forge was the VP yes, of Forge. Of many, many, one of my dear, dear friends. I love her so much. I love her. She, yeah, she introduced me to Eileen Ford, you know, oh, wow. before yeah. she passed. Yeah. Um, and I was telling her, oh, I want to be a scout. I want to do this, you know. Yeah. And she was, like, giving me some advice about the business. And she was, like, never compromise on your integrity. And, right. you know, always look for the, the best talent that you can. And have that reputation of having, you know, the best uh, talent that you can. Um, so she gave me some advice and then Scott lips from one management. Yeah, of course. Who opened up two management and then now he has lips LA. He was also, I love him they, by the way. I worked with yeah. him before. I love him. Yeah. He's great. He's a yeah. great agent. No, he has a great, idea. he so good. social media yeah. he gets everything. Everything. And he was like, he really helped me out in the beginning. I was like, come on board and help. You can help scout for one management, things like that. So I just had good friends in the business that helped right. me build. So you worked at one first? I didn't know that. Well, I was a scout kind of like under the scenes because I was a mother agent. Yeah. You know, so he helped me out with the, the talent. They couldn't keep up with the new faces because Scott Lips at the time had, was it scouted? It was a, a TV show. So it was one of the most popular eight agencies okay. at the time. So they yeah. had so many mm -hmm. girls. He would just give me the email list and mm -hmm. I would just find so many girls from that. Yeah. yeah. And I would be mother on them. I'd place them at one. If they didn't want her, you know, then I would place her with a different agency. So I just kind of have this relationship always building with, you know, one or two or three agencies and keeping, I think most mother agents do like you have yeah. a good relationship with one, two, three, four agencies. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. yeah that's the way I know. Work hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't so know why, but you kind of just do that. I don't know. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally. Well, the people you like to work with, I don't know. Yeah. So exactly. You like to work with them. They respect you and yeah. They pay you. <laughs> yeah. And they pay you. Someday. Yeah, exactly. Then you kind of figure out who's, you know, a great agency to work with. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Do you, what, Katya, what were you going to say? I was about to say that you also know that when you place models with them, that models are treated nice and working. Yeah. Yes, so exactly. That's really important. Yeah. Oh, that's so important. The models feel good when they go in there, you know, sit down with their agents. They feel comfortable. Because I've worked with agencies that the models are scared to death to walk in the door and go talk to their bookers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, so you started to scout for the industry too. So you did it for one and then you did for the industry. Yeah. So I was a mother agent for five years first. Okay. And then, um, yeah, how they came back. I love Brunella Casella, you know, oh, Brunella, yeah, yeah, I know. head of elite Europe. She was yeah. head of management in New York and she just, I just fell in love with her. I just loved her so much. You know, she recently passed. Yeah. Years ago. So, um, she was this beautiful Italian model and yeah. she was a, you know, a very good Asian scout and director. So she became the director of the industry models and she kept saying, Lisa, please, yeah. you know, we're building this agency, come help us out. And they were in the, in the iconic Pier 59 studios. If you've ever been there, it's the most gorgeous on gorgeous. the water, on the yeah. Hudson studios where everything is shot. I mean, you saw Oprah there, all the Victoria's Secret models, all the TV commercials, like it's the place to work. And yeah. She's like, you have this penthouse office. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful office there. Oh, so you gorgeous. You go up the stairs and it's like, yes. you feel like you're on top, you're looking out the yes. window, you're like on top of the world up there. I was just so gorgeous. So she's like, come on for a year, help us. So I was a mother agent with my own talent. Right. And I became, they hired mugshot management, which is my company, yeah. you know, to, to scout, and, you know, but it was a new, new agency. So it was very difficult to build up a new agency and finding new talent because you find great talent. And then the mother agent wants to place them with IMG or with elite, yeah. you know, you know, so it was, we were losing a lot of girls in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're doing excellent. Now they're doing super well. It's been what, three, four years. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I was working for them for only one year, only one year. Then oh, I was back. it was only one. Okay. No, only, one one, only one year. And then after that, I was like, I got to get out of New York City. I'm done with a rat race. Yeah. And I moved, I moved back to LA. So how long have you been back in LA? Well, I was in Laguna Beach. I opened up yeah. an office there for a year. Um, yeah. Very spooky beach town, gorgeous town. Yeah. Um, loved it, it there. Gorgeous. Yeah, I loved it there. Um, really pretty. And then now I'm in Los Angeles. So oh, you are? A little closer. Yeah, I'm in LA now. I'm in Palos Verdes States. Oh, nice. So like right on the bluffs, right below Manhattan Beach in the South and, Bay. And so you're still scouting? Is that where you're? I'm still scouting, but my passion really is still in the model business, but I'm doing online e-courses now. That's like right, my Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Doing, yeah, I just, I love putting it all together, right? Social media, teaching, coaching, and then doing courses where I can still help people in the business. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Yeah. And uh, so how many girls have you placed with Mugshot? Uh, over a hundred. Oh, that's so good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's real. Over, 100 and I, over hundreds of girls with, when I was, at, yeah. we, skipped, we skipped the whole part of my whole scouting. I was a Tokyo scout for five oh, years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was on one, one of my questions yeah. was, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah. I want to hear about so that. I'm bored a little bit because industry was after. So my yeah. first five years as a mother agent, I was also a scout for Asia, sending models to Tokyo. I sent hundreds of models from right. agencies from LA, New York, Paris, Brazil, Lithuania, you know, all, all over the world. Right. Um, I would travel to all these countries and I would sit there and I'd meet models one after the other after the other. So and choose fun. the right ones, sign them to a contract and send them to J Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. Yeah. And what, so, what agency was it? Was it Wizard? I was with Wizard Models for five years and then I was with Bravo Models for two years. Oh, that's a good agency too. Yeah, yeah. they're great agencies. As you know, Je the Japanese market is fantastic. You, it pays the yeah. most for magazines. It's a magazine market. Yeah. Yeah. Katya and I were just talking about that before you came on. We were, I was talking about my experiences in Japan yeah. and how wonderful it was. I loved working in Japan. Yeah, me too. Oh, you yeah. were a model in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, well, for at was. least, I mean, I would go there like at least three years, like total. Yeah. It's so wonderful. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, the models that work well in Japan or Asia in general, they go back a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I kept going back. I kept going back. Because the money's so you good. Get paid. <laughs> I know. You're going to pay well. That's what you're back. Yeah, it's, it's a great country, great food. People are right. awesome. But they pay well. They pay you in cash the day you leave. They're like, yeah. you're 20 grand. Really? And you're like, bye. I'll be back. 
<laughs> so you don't have to wait three months to get no. paid. <laughs> no, you get they the money right there. Up, they pay you the day you leave. But you have to think, I mean, you pay them half or yeah. whatever you make, you have, you pay mm -hmm. them half. So it's, I mean, it, all in all, I think it's worth it. I mean, to go and make half. <laughs> and also it's worth it because you shoot editorials, which yeah. Tokyo's up there with Paris editorials. Right. You know, the great magazines. Yeah. You know, you want to be on the cover of, you know, Japanese Vogue. Yeah. Or Japanese Harper's Bazaar. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. So, um, how, tell, tell our listeners how important it is for social media nowadays. Nowadays, social media is your calling card, your comp <laughs> card, your portfolio, your photo book, whatever you want to call it. It is half of who you are as a model. And I want to wring some models' necks when they say, oh, I don't need social media. No. Yeah. If you're going to a casting and you have to put down your social media and it's between you and some other girls, they're always going to go with the girl who's smart, gets it, and it's like pushing their, their career forward. Right. You know, you, you, you push your career forward in so many ways on social media because you get out there to so many more people and clients and fans. You know, it's just being like relevant, right? Right. And it doesn't have to be selfies. It has, it, it can be anything of whatever you're interested in. If you can do, I have a model, I'm like, do a, do a book club because she reads all the time. Do like Brooks book club, you yeah. know? And then I have a model who does like um, funny TikToks and she's hilarious. And you know, she, she posts those and then like cooking shows, whatever it is that you're passionate about knitting. It could be anything. Yeah. You might think it's boring, but you're going to find your people and your team, you know, that, that want to follow you. And so it's just really important to have, you know, pictures of you and like things that you're doing and a little insight into your life. It's just, it's just your calling card because nobody really wants to look at the books anymore for some reason, right? No. Well, you go to, you go to a, a client, let's say you're on a gap casting. They look through your book or look through your book online. It's not really that. They're like, who is this person as an individual? Yeah. Who, who, who are they? So that's why yeah. they go on Instagram. Ooh, that's cool. Oh my gosh, they can yeah. do that. That's awesome. We can do that. And they can use that in the, in the pictures, in the ad. So. And a lot of times they, they want to know exactly what are your interests. So, I mean, if you, know, if you love dance and you're a dancer, then that's they're like, oh yeah, that's perfect. We want you yeah. to dance yeah. in the commercial or whatever. Exactly. So. It for example, really like, I always will get the question, like, what do you like to do for fun? And mm -hmm. I feel like for beginner models, like, that could be something that if you're not prepared what to answer, because you don't want to say modeling. You want to say something <laughs> different <laughs> about right. you. Like, oh, like, like, I love cooking, right? Or mm -hmm. anything. could be anything. And I like that you mentioned that, that instead of, like, posting selfies or just pictures mm -hmm. of you, I mean, share with your audience what, what else is so interesting about you as a person. Yeah, yeah. exactly, Katia. And, and the other thing, too, now is it's evolved social media. So in the beginning, it was, like, beautiful selfies, right? Mm -hmm. And those yeah. girls <laughs> Instagram models, but not like that anymore. Bless you, Jasper. It's not like that anymore. What, right. it's, what it's about is, like, they go on there and it's not like you do one caption of like, oh, fun day at the beach. They don't want to see that. They want to yeah. hear like more your insight yeah. about the things where you're actually writing a paragraph about right. something. And like who you, have, you like, are. Something to say. Yeah, who you are, something to yeah. say. That's important. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I have one yeah. girl who's actually um, in Florida right now and I'm, she's short, you know, and I'm trying to get her with an agency, but she's, you know, petite model. I mean, I just love her. She's so gorgeous, but she has so many followings on YouTube and all she does is just post about her life and what's going on, you know, going out with her boyfriend. And it's I like, I know. And it's just like, everybody loves her on YouTube because she just talks about herself and what's going on. Here's my dog, you know, <laughs> and it's yeah, cute. It, it takes, it takes a smart girl to do that too, because not everybody wants to be on camera and expose and put themselves yeah. out there like that either. Yeah. But you know, if you're building a following, people find you interesting and yeah. you can open up so many doors for you. And that's what I was going to say. Nowadays there's, there is the modeling. If you go on any agency and you have model boards, the yeah. influencer board is a very important board. Very, yeah. Clients look at that influencer board and model can be on the influencer board. She has yeah. a big following on YouTube you know, place it with an influencer agency yeah. because I mean, that's kind of what clients are looking for nowadays. That's why I keep telling models you have to cross over now. Yeah. And that's what I was going to, that was my next question is like in five years, sort of where do you see the business going? I mean, I tell you for me, it's really about the influencers, but yes. what do you think? 
Yeah, so, so the models becoming the influencers, or just like you said, this girl who's not a typical model, being the influencer, it's the celebrity. It's yeah. whoever's building a brand. Yep. You know, that, I, I think it's what it is. I think models are gonna start morphing year after year into a little bit more personality yep. models. Yeah, I, I really do think that that's everything. I mean, you, you know, if you're working with a client for a week or two weeks, I mean, the clients want to be with someone who has a great personality. They don't. Yeah. You know. No, and, oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, the I per, have. Personality is everything. You can't yeah. do that, have that attitude anymore like those Nomi Campbell days. It doesn't work. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's still working for her. <laughs> I know. Well, she's named. Anything like yeah. She's named. Now she's like, you know. <laughs> So what is your um, favorite part, I guess, about modeling? Like, what do you like the most about the modeling business? And what do you dislike about the modeling business? Hmm, what I like the most, when I was a model or now as a manager? Well, let's do I both. Well. Let's do both, yes. Yeah, yeah. Both, the whole modeling business in general is the fact that it opens up a lot of opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen, even just for myself, but tons of my friends who, I'm in my early 40s now, but you are not. Yeah, <laughs> I, am. I know I turned 40. I'm like, oh. Oh, you look great. Anyway. anyway. So what I'm trying to say is, is like then I've been in the business for over 20 years, right? right? Imagine all the people that I see right now who do so well. Not just big models or big actors. A lot of a lot of the models have turned into actors. I see them on TV yes. all the time. Yes. Hosting shows, um, mm -hmm. reporting, you know, anything they were interested in as a model. That opens up so many doors, but not even just that. So many of, of my models uh, have gone to Harvard and Columbia. You know, they get an education from modeling because they can afford it later when yeah. their parents couldn't have afforded it. They're right. in school studying whatever it is they want to do. So many successful photographers, architects, doctors. I mean, you name it. They've gone on to um, be successful in their careers because they, their, their minds are open. When right. you're traveling around the world, it's so different than you're just in Ohio in your 20s or 30s. Like if yeah. you're traveling around the world, you're like, wait a second, I didn't even know I love to cook Thai food, you know, <laughs> and then become a, open up a restaurant when you get back to New York. Yeah. You just start, you discover things about yourself as a model. And that's what I love about modeling. Mm -hmm. It's not just about being a pretty face or having this great personality. It's the people that you meet along yeah. the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, me too. It's not bad, you know. But it. It's the money, yeah, it didn't even, I mean, it's not even the money really for me. It was more of just traveling and meeting such interesting people, all different. Yeah, because the money comes with that. Yeah. When you're successful, the money always comes. Yeah, money always comes. I, I never, wor I have never worried about that. No, I have never I worried about money either. Even during the pandemic, I'm like, you know what? My money will work out. <laughs> I'm not making any money right now, but I don't care because it'll all work out and it, and it will come around again. And right. It all does. And you, you think like that. Yeah. And, and I always thought that traveling was the best to meet such interesting traveling. people. Um, so, all right. Tell me some things that you maybe dis I want to dislike or is not your favorite part about the business. Hmm. Cause you got to talk about that happen too. as much nowadays mm. in the modeling business, but I never liked men or even women taking advantage of you. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't good. Yeah, I don't think that happens much anymore. No, it doesn't happen that much anymore. But I was a model. Oh my goodness, it wasn't just the men. It was also the bookers saying, "Hey, come out with us tonight." And you go to dinner, and you're sitting there with a bunch of like old men. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to be like, "Hey," and have conversations with a guy 25 years older than you. You have nothing in common with. Right. And and agent directors used to do that a lot. Not, yeah. not, they're not pimping you out, but they want they always bringing you to parties or events. You know, with the whole like Jeffrey Epstein thing. You know, all yeah. that. You know, who yep. I knew personally, and so did a lot of my friends. Yeah. You know, we didn't know anything about the dark side of what was going on. But, yeah. like, that whole thing of just, like, older men, younger women, photographers taking advantage. Thank God for the Me Too and everything coming out now that it's not like that anymore. I don't ra rarely hear about that anymore, except for some yeah. with boys. I've know. heard some little, yeah, more with boys. Me more too. with boys. I know. And that's why I don't represent a lot of boys. Me neither. <laughs> I'm the same way. I, I had too many stories. I'm like, what happened to you? He did what? I just couldn't take it. You know, because I am a mother of three little boys. And I'm like, I can't take this, managing boys. I'm, ex you know crazy. what? I'm exact, you know, I have a son too. And I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I'm not like, I'm like, I know I'd rather you not. 
<laughs> no, my son Jasper, who's nine, he's like, I'm going to model. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay when you're there for them. Yeah. So as you get a little bit older, you just have to be, it happens in every business, by yeah. the way. It's not a yeah. long business. Um, yeah, I think what we need to do is teach young people to be strong, you know? I think and to have the words and they speak up for themselves. Speak for up, sure. be strong. Yeah. Say, Hello, bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, stuff like that. So that's the, what I don't like about the yeah. modeling business. I know it's in every business, but when you're around beautiful people, you yeah. know, it's just. So, and what do you love about placing girls? Oh, I just love, first of all, placing a model in a different country yeah. and getting that whole experience out of them and having them, letting them grow as a person. I love that, that aspect of it. Um, and it's just seeing their dreams happen for them. Mm. I mean, you take a girl from like a little town in Arkansas and send them to New York and they're like, whoa, look at this city. This is awesome. That's like everything to them. Yeah. You know, I, lo I love like just, just having them work and they're living their dreams. So that's, that's what makes me happy. Mm, I love that too. That's, I think that's one of my favorite things. It's just to that's see. Yeah. I mean, just to see like, you know, I don't know, just to see them really sort of open up about life. Yeah. You know, they really, they really get this a new experience of a whole nother world than just, you know, their yeah. high school or whatever exactly. they've been experiencing. You think outside the box, you're more creative, you have more confidence to do things yeah. that you really want. Mm -hmm. So in the business now, so where do you think the, like, I, I mean, I know because of the pandemic and everything that's happened, but what do you feel like? Where is the best? Do you think Germany is going to be the best place for right now for girls to go? Well, I mean, I don't think LA is even open yet. Um, New York is slowly yeah. opening. Miami's a little open. Um, this is, you're not going to work well in these you know, cities yet. Yeah. Um, London's opening. Paris is opening. I just, the girls that I have in Europe are the ones that are working, not the ones in the States. Right. I know. Um, I, just, I just talked to one of the scouts in New York, and she was like, maybe July. <laughs> Or maybe August. I mean, both of them were like two different ones, and one was like, maybe August, maybe July. <laughs> they were not sure. In the big agencies. Was it mm -hmm. LA or New York? In New York. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like hopefully fall time. You know, if we don't get the second wave. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. With all the rioting and things. Yeah, I know. I hope so, not. And besides, um, you know, placing them, how do you develop the girls? What do, you, um, how do you, what do you do in that? Well, it's hard these days. When, when the girls are in person, you know, then I, I like to shoot. So I, I do test shoots with the girls. Oh, oh, and I get them to move, you know, learn how, because movement is everything. You do not come, become a top model unless you can move well. That's the yeah. key. Yeah. So it's movement, you know, and expressions in front of the camera. So I, I kind of teach all that. Um, but I have so many talent, so much talent that you discover I'm in LA and they're in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you can do Zoom calls and things like yeah. that, but really all it is in modeling is getting out and doing it. Test shooting, test shooting, test shooting. That's how you learn. Right. So, test shooting with many yeah. photographers as possible, good ones, yeah. um, as possible. Um, getting a book going, and then for me, it's development, going to some market, even small, like Mexico City or Istanbul, you know, small market and just working from there. Right. That's for, for me, or Asia, if they can. Yeah, um, that... Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that. What are the qualifications for Asia? That was one of my questions. I have well, changing a little bit. You're seeing a little bit of darker girls in Asia, um, but it's mostly white skin, like Katya coloring, white, white skin and like, doll faces. So, yeah. and, and more petite. So like five, seven, five, eight, five, nine, and more petite body. Right. We yeah. just did an interview with one girl, Jill, and she does so well in Asia and she's blonde, yeah. Very pale skin. Um, she's been there, what, four years in a row or something. She was telling us, I was like, oh, she's like, it's great. That's the only place I really care about working. Five yeah. seven. Uh, yeah, she's five seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five seven's fine in Asia. They're small there, so they don't mind smaller. You cannot work in Asia if you're over five ten. Yeah. No. Yeah. Especially five eleven, forget about it. <laughs> That's great. It's, small. <laughs> it's a smaller market. Five six to five nine and a half. So when you're finding girls, like where do you, I mean, do you do you like I do sometimes and just go in to a restaurant and find them or do you find them on social media or? Oh, let me change it real quick though. Cause I said that about Asia, but not, it's not true for Malaysia and Thailand and Singapore. Right. Yeah. Sorry. You can be 5'11". You can be taller for those. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so when ha, my scouting process? Yeah, just, I mean, anywhere, I, for me, anyway. anywhere I am, anywhere I am, doesn't matter where I am, but I do like to go to a few different places. So I like to go to volleyball and basketball games. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're too tall. Yeah. Too tall and too muscular. But like, I like to go to those games just because, or bath, or even football games, just because there's tons of teenagers around. Mm -hmm. Um. But beaches. I know you can't maybe if you're Virginia unless you're on a Virginia beach. But like, yeah. Here, here, obviously in California, just up and down, walking up and down the beaches. I don't like to bother people too much, so I usually don't talk much. I have scout friends that will talk to kids forever. Like you take pictures of them when they first see them. Never do no, I. Do I don't do that either. No, mm-hmm. I always just talk to them a little bit. Think I, you know, I'd love to work with them. Check out my website or check out my Instagram. Here's my card. Yeah. Right. Some I hear from, some I don't. Yeah. You know, boys, you'll hear from them right away. <laughs> boys, you'll hear them within the hour. I don't always. go up to them. <laughs> you can have them. The hour. They want a model so bad. They're like. I can meet girls. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. girls, sometimes you don't hear from them for a year or two. It's crazy. Yeah, and I'm actually having a lot of people nowadays not want to, like, if I go up to them, they'll be like, no, I never thought about it. They're like, not, not even past, you know, entered my mind. And those are always the ones that I love. Oh, those are the best, too, though. <laughs> they never thought about it because it's like they have a unique look that you yeah. have to bring out of them. That they never thought. They're like, oh, I never thought. So um, I know from your own Instagram that you are really into health and eating right and all that. Do you advise mm-hmm. your girls about that? And what kind of do you tell them? Well, for me, especially nowadays, I mean, 10 years ago, I would say you have to, you know, be as trim and fit as possible. Not, not anymore. What, what I say now is your own best self. Okay, because you can't starve yourself to be skinny and you can't gain weight to be a plus size. So whatever it is that your size is, tweak that a little bit, whether it's gaining muscle or losing weight. You know, I just think it depends on what kind of modeling you're doing. If you're doing high fashion modeling, you know, then you need to be a certain size. Um, yeah. If you're more of a plus size, yeah, you can be a little bit cur- curvier, but don't, you know, you still have to look good. Yeah. Um, and then the exercise. Have- <laughs> yeah, you're in a, if you're an influencer, you could probably be any size or whatever, but keep it your best size. Right. So it's always to me, it's like check out the body, like critique your body and, and just work out and for your best self. Meaning eating healthy is, is, is harder than people think. It's not just eating healthy, right? You right. have to really, I don't know if you want to get into all that, but it's like you really have to know exactly what is good for you to eat and what's because because what's good for Kati to eat may not be good for what I eat. I know if I eat sugar. A lot of sugary stuff, I break out like crazy. And you right. want the same. <laughs> yeah. I break I also out. feel like it's like it's the preservatives they put yeah. into, you know, in, anything like chocolate. Oh, I, I mean, feel like everything that I pick up to eat, I look, I don't look the begin the front of any box or can or any food you pick up is the is marketing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't believe anything it says on the front. Look. Turn it around. Oh like, I totally hear you. Like, I'm a total nerd. Like, I check all the ingredients, and if yeah. I don't like it, okay, no, I'm not buying this product. I'm then buying then turn it different around. Brand. Look at the ingredients, and if there's something you cannot pronounce, don't buy it. Right. You know, it, should, it shouldn't be that many ingredients. If there are artificial colors, artificial flavors, monosodium glutamate, it's like a brain yeah. bridge, you know. <laughs> It, it, a high fructose corn syrup makes you fat. Like it just yes. does. You eat lots of high fructose corn syrup products. It's everywhere. Good, yeah. good luck trying to lose weight. Read that stuff and don't buy it. Let's say you love root beer. You know what? Go to Whole Foods and get a root beer that does, has cane sugar instead. Yeah. Like make simple little tweaks to your diet. When you're not eating chemicals because chemicals is what is going to make you so hard to look young and healthy and, and keep your body fit and trim. Like I just don't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Why like, I'm, like, I'm so crazy drink. about it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like one of those people. I could care less if I have sugar. Well, I don't care. Yeah, sugar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, can have, you can handle sugar a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the salty. That's my <laughs> Same. <laughs> Salt and crunchy or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care about sugar either. There's a cake in front of me. I was like, I know. A cake or guacamole and chips. Mmm, guacamole. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm too. I don't have too much of a sweet tooth, luckily. But yeah, yeah this is all about, like, if you want to, you know, eat that cake, it's fine. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. also work out, balance it. And then what's super, super important that a lot of people don't do, I mean, you should do this in general. You got to cleanse twice a year. Yeah. 
I think it's really important that you take a week or two and you wake up in the morning, you have hot water and lemon, drink kombuchas, you drink hot teas, you know what I mean? Bone broth, I don't know, whatever it is, like a lot of liquids, juicing, light salads, vegetables, you know, and you just eat that way for a week or two and cleanse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because your body needs time and you're eating meat or eating carbs, breaking that down all the time. That's what makes you like get wrinkles and stuff. You want to cleanse everything out. I better start cleansing. Yeah, I know. It's just important. <laughs> and plus you feel so good. You have so much energy. I'm starting it right now. Oh, you I'm are? Go through the pandemic. I gained like eight pounds with my boyfriend. Really? All who's making chicken or like enchiladas, you know, and oh. shrimp and like <laughs> crab legs. And I mean, we're just making all this crazy food and loving it. And it's like, wait a second. And I know my body, I'm getting sluggish. I feel it. Loaded yeah. and like, no, it's time. I just got to take. I started today. Oh, good for you. Yeah, started today. How do you just, feel about give your body um, a rest? Yeah, and that's important for a model because it's really hard as you get older to stay fit and healthy unless you. Isn't do it? I know. I lost. I lost weight during this time. It's the weirdest thing. I was walking like five or six miles. Well, I still am. Five Literally. or six miles every day, and I just ended up losing weight. All my other friends are like, I gained 10 pounds. I I'm like, I lost it. <laughs> oh, good. Good for you. Well, you were active, which is nice. Yes, yeah, have to be. We couldn't even go to our hiking trails around here, though. Oh, you couldn't even mm. go? No. So we stopped working out. We used to hike all the time. We couldn't go to the beach. We couldn't do anything. Uh, here in California. Know. Yeah. So what were we going to say, Katya? I know you, you were going to say Oh, I wanted to ask you, like, um, what do you think about intermittent fasting? Have you done that? Yeah, well, that's basically what I was saying. Yeah. So yeah, that's what basically you do like it's every half a year? Yeah, it's just like whatever works for you. Um, I have kids. So when my kids go away, it's usually when I'll do that kind of fasting. Right. You know, because then it gives me a break because I'm not cooking for them all the time. Yeah. It's like, okay, finally, I can eat what I want to eat. Um, yeah, intermittent fasting. You mean like a day fasting? One day, right? I mean, people do it 8 to 16 or push it more. But basically, like from, I mean, my experience and like I, i've tried it like when you push breakfast and you basically uh, you eat lunch you kind of just skip the prep breakfast and i saw that more people starting yeah. you know doing it from the perspective that basically you know like your insulin goes down yeah. and you allow your body to you know, yes. restore yeah <laughs> your body is it's, it's still your body's resting you're able to de detox the tox the toxins is what it keeps you know makes you get fatter or get bigger yeah the toxins in our body yeah you no know, so like yeah so what you're saying intermittent fasting whether you're doing it for a few days or like a couple weeks is just giving your body time to rest and detox it all out yeah and there's like herbs you can get like you go to whole foods they have a, the best selection of vitamins and herbs and you can get like herbs that are just to help you like colon cleanse or liver cleanse and you just take those herbs while you're you're on that hmm. yeah i guess i need to get on that myself <laughs> I've never tried herbs. Like, I never no, me neither. <laughs> I might try it though. They're so gentle. They're so gentle. You don't really. Yeah. yeah. So but no, I was all in this crazy stuff as a model. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't. I just ate whatever when I was a model. I never even thought about it. Just worked out every day. So, yeah. um, it, but cool. as soon as I hit forty, it was like, boop, everything stops yeah. and slow down. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying too. I never gained any weight ever yeah. before unless I was pregnant. I've never yeah. gained weight. Yeah. You know, until like recently, like I said, just hit 40 and I'm like, oh goodness, why am I gaining weight now? Yeah. But I was also eating, I was eating like crazy. My, my boyfriend loves to cook. So I'm oh, like, nice. oh, stop cooking all this good food. <laughs> dangerous. You can send it also, over here. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I also felt like that, um, you know, in the past years, maybe past 10 to 20 years, the, food industry itself had changed a lot and you yes. know what you've been eating um, exactly. in the 90s was cleaner and it was whole foods but what we're eating now it's not natural food yeah no, exactly. that's the whole point that i was saying yeah. careful what you're eating because yeah. they, put, they put stuff in the food to, you know to make you addicted to the food yeah, and yeah. go back and buy more every week <laughs> so you gotta be yeah careful I was just talking about that. I got to go buy more food. <laughs> I like, why do I have to keep buying food? Because uh, everybody's home. Um, yeah. I just wanted to hear, so about your online class. I know you had an online class about scouting. Tell me what that's about and just tell me a little bit about that. Well, I created a course for anyone who's interested in having a home-based business. So it's called Model Scout University. So I actually teach people how to have their own, like what Kim and I do, have your own home-based business where you're scouting models in your territory where you live and online 
and, and creating a, an income, a job for yourself, you know, creating your own career for yourself. Especially nowadays in this pandemic time, most people are working from home, even they have normal jobs. Why not have a job that you're working from home? You gotta stay home with your kids or retire your husband or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? So that's just like, for me, it's like, I have loved being a model, you know, um, Asian, a, mo a mother agent. So I just wanna, a lot of people don't know about it. They can even have this job. There is, you can't learn it in school. Nobody teaches you this kind of stuff. But right. It's a great career yeah. to have. Because I mean, you basically work when you're just out and about. And you're actually, <laughs> you're actually you know, I, I, I used to take my kids when they were little scouting with me, running on oh, the beach. I did too, I did too. I took them everywhere. Just yeah. perfect for a mother or a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. You know, or even dads, it doesn't have to be a woman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just easier to go up to people when you're a woman. <laughs> Yeah, it's not as easy, but I know very successful male agents. Yes, that's true. Oh my gosh, for sure. As long as they're trustworthy, yeah. But you yeah. have to do business. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, Katia, do you have anything else you want to ask her? Is it our last question? <laughs> if it is, like, I wanted to ask you where people can find you. Okay. Oh, that's great. Okay, so I'm on Instagram at Mugshot Management. M-U-G-S-H-O-T Management. That's where you can find me mostly. Um, and I'm also, my personal on Instagram is Model Scout. Well, Model Scout Lisa Phillips, like Model Scout underscore Lisa Phillips. Yeah, I love that you'd put that on there. <laughs> I kept changing, I've changed it so many times because Lisa Phillips is such a common name. I can never get my name. <laughs> right. I yeah. actually know a Lisa Phillips, which is weird. Yeah, is. very common. Yeah, yeah. I'm also on YouTube, Lisa Phillips NY on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I have tons of videos on YouTube stuff like this. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much for talking with us. Anything um, else you want to add to what we were talking about or did we cover? Yes. Well, I would love to add that you are the creator of your world. You create your destiny. And if you want to model or have any type of career in this business that you absolutely can do it. There are, this is one business. There are little loopholes and it doesn't matter like where you're from, what you look like, it's your ambition. If you want to get there, you can become an influencer or a model. Just stick with it, stick with it and believe in yourself. Yeah. We say in hard work. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Yeah. It's a great message. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, yeah, thank you so for joining much. us. Yay. Thank you for coming. You're and welcome. Talking to us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.